I wanted to slow it down a little bit here since we're outside of class and show you how I write the products for either a single or double replacement reaction and how to get the correct subscripts, especially when we're talking about an ionic compound. So let's take a look at this first one. I see that I have a lone element plus an acid. Uh, and if you take a look at the second one, I have a lone element plus an ionic. That's an obvious sign that I have a single replacement reaction. I'm looking for something in elemental form. In this, these two cases, it's aluminum. And then either an ionic or an aqueous acid. Uh, for our level right now, we're not writing the state symbols and we're not caring about the net ionic equation. Not yet, at least. So, what do you do? Well, the lone element here, in this case the metal, is only possibly going to be a cation. Here, in the acid, we have a cation and an anion. Well, positives like negatives, so the aluminum can only bind with the chlorine. Again, because the aluminum will have a positive charge and the chlorine will have a negative charge. So I have to put the aluminum with the chlorine. Now, the aluminum has a 3 plus charge and the chlorine has a minus 1 charge. So I need 3 chlorines to balance out the plus 3 charge of aluminum. 3 chlorines will make a total of a minus 3 on the chlorine side, plus 3 here, make this neutral. Remember, for these kinds of reactions, you're always looking for the neutral product. You don't want your product to have any charge at all. Okay, so AlCl3, and then we have the H, but you don't write H by itself, it's not stable, it's one of your diatomics. In an elemental form, it'll be H2 as a gas. So uh, there it is. You would also ultimately want to balance this. Uh, so I look for the compound with the most subscripts and the highest number of subscripts to start first. Three chlorines here, so I need three here. Three hydrogens here, uh, so I'd actually have to have a three halves here. Three halves times two would make three hydrogens on that side. And then I have one aluminum on each. In my class, I prefer to have whole numbers for balancing. So I'm going to multiply through everything by 2. Because in this class, I'm preferring whole numbers as we balance. OK, let's try the next one. Again, a single replacement. I have a compound plus a lone element. So the aluminum, again, will have a positive charge. Magnesium, manganese is positive, sulfate is negative. So the aluminum has to go with the sulfate because a plus likes a minus. That's its only option. It's not going to do a plus with a plus. So we've got aluminum. Sulfate, the aluminum, remember, is a 3 plus charge. The sulfate is one of your polyatomic anions, 2 minus. I need to balance those charges out to make this species neutral. The easiest way typically people do, just like above, is you just switch the charges. So you put the 3 for the sulfate and the 2 for the aluminum. Let's see how that works. 2 aluminums at plus 3 will make it a total plus 6 for the aluminum. And then uh, three sulfates at minus two would be a total of minus six. Plus six and minus six make a total of zero. So uh, this, is, this is our ionic compound as the product. And then we're going to have manganese all by itself. And uh, it's not diatomic or anything, just by itself. That's uh, how metals operate typically. You're just going to write it all by itself. Let's look at the next one. We have an ionic compound with another ionic. By the way, you might be wondering, how do I recognize that something's ionic? Well, anytime time something has a metal in it, it's ionic, as far as what we've learned so far. So the manganese sulfate was an ionic compound as well, because it has a metal in it. So whenever you see two ionics, and we'll see this in the next case as well, that's a double replacement reaction. They're both going to switch partners. So sodium's a cation, chromate's an anion. Barium's a cation, chlorine's an anion. So the barium has no choice. It has to go with the chromium. Barium won't go with the sodium because that would make two positives. The sodium, when it takes a partner from over here, has to take the chlorine. The sodium is positive, chlorine is negative. Uh, the sodium, again, cannot go with the bromine uh, because they're both positive, and the chromium can't go with the chlorine because they're both negative. So I'm going to write NaCl plus barium chromium. Okay, now let's work on the subscripts. Sodium's plus and chlorine's minus, as we know from the periodic table. So uh, just one of each will make sodium chloride neutral. I don't need any special subscripts. Barium is two plus and chromate is two minus. 
one of each of those will make that neutral. Okay? You wouldn't want to put a two here and a two here. You're typically, uh, for this class, looking for the lowest common uh, whole number. So one of each would be fine. You would divide three by the two. Uh, there we go. We want to balance this. I look at the most complicated one. For me, that's a sodium chromate. I need two sodiums. So I put two sodium chlorides over there. I need one chromate. I got one. And then I've exhausted this molecule. Take a look at the barium, one of each. I'm good. Let's see the last one. Uh, again, ion compound with another ionic. I know they're ionics because they have metals. Okay? So this is a double replacement. They're both going to switch partners. The calcium has to go with the phosphate. Why is that? Calcium is positive, phosphate is negative. It's its only choice. Calcium cannot go with the potassium because the potassium is also positive. Now the potassium has to go with the acetate. It has no other choice because the potassium is positive and the acetate is the only one over here that's negative. Pop plus goes with minus. So let's write that out. KC2H3O2 the potassium acetate, and then we also have the calcium phosphate. Okay, now let's work on the subscripts. Potassium is plus one, acetate is minus one. Acetate is one of your polyatomic anions. A plus with a minus makes that neutral, so that's good as is. The calcium, you know from the periodic table is two plus. Phosphate is a polyatomic anion, uh, and it's minus three. So this is easiest if you just switch the charges, put the three from phosphate here as a subscript, and the two here. Now, take a look at that. Three calciums at plus two, that makes plus six. Three phosphates at minus three, or two phosphates at minus three, and for minus six, that one will be neutral. So we're good there. Remember, after you fix the subscripts, you, they cannot be changed during balancing. You can only balance using a reaction coefficient or a large number in the front. Okay, let's balance this. Uh, this has the most complicated subscript, so I'll start with the calcium phosphate. Three calciums there, so I need three here. Uh, and then there's two phosphates there, so I put two here. Well, I looked at the calcium phosphate already. I have not looked at the potassium. I have six here, so I need six here. I haven't looked at the acetate. I have six there now and three times two, six here. So that'll work. So there's some examples of some single double replacements and how to write the subscripts for ionic compounds.